Welcome to our third episode. In this episode, I'd like to introduce how to manage an audit program or audit activity. In general, an audit program may include single or multiple audit activities, depending upon the size, nature, and complexity of the organization. The organization's top management should grant the authority for managing the audit program through establishing, implementing, monitoring, reviewing, and improving the audit program, and identify all available resources. Let's go deeper on audit program objectives and audit program resources. For the objectives, they actually intend to find the management priorities and commercial intentions, identify management system requirements and statutory, regulatory, and contractual requirements, fulfill the need for suppliers' evaluations and customs requirements. And finally, detect needs for other interested parties and the risks for the organization per se. Let's do the audit program resources. It includes intangible and tangible resources such as financial resources, audit techniques, process to maintain auditor performance, and competent auditors and technicians. Oh yeah, finally, don't forget the traveling time. And accommodation and other auditing needs. Then, what is the job scope of an audit program? With the presence of an audit program, would like to establish the objectives and procedures of an audit program, and then ensure the implementation and appropriate maintenance of an audit program. And finally. Monitor and review and improve that audit program. Let's go through together the procedures of an audit program. The first step should be planning and scheduling the audits. And second one is assuring the competence of auditors and audit team leaders, followed by selecting appropriate audit teams and assign their roles and responsibilities. And then conducting audit follow-up, maintaining audit program records, and monitoring the performance and effectiveness of the audit program. Finally, report to the top management on the overall achievements of the audit program. The audit program implementation involves multiple phases. First, we initiate activities. With communicating the audit program and coordinating and scheduling the ideal time for the audit activities. After that, we are establishing and maintaining the evaluation of the auditors and their continual professional development. On the second stage of audit program implementation, we provide the necessary resources and select audit teams, and then conduct. The auditing activities and the control auditing records. Finally, we will review, approve, and distribute our audit reports. Finally, for the audit follow-up option, it's totally depending on the organization's decisions. So, what is audit program records? The record related to individual audits consists of the audit plan, audit report. Non-conformity report, corrective and preventive action report, and finally audit follow-up report. While the records related to audit personnel covering subjects involves in the auditor competence and performance evaluation, the audit team selection, and then finally the maintenance and improvement of competence. The final step of procedures is monitoring and reviewing the audit programs. Why we need to do that? Because we must ensure our objectives have been fulfilled and our money haven't been wasted. 
Therefore, we provide three different standards there to monitor and review our audit programs. Firstly, we will check whether our audit teams have the ability to implement the audit plan. Secondly, we will check whether our program is in conformity with our schedules. Thirdly, we will check the feedback from audit clients or auditees and auditors. All these standards lead to the corrective and the preventive actions and then resultant improvement of the audit program. Now let's take a break and make a review about the content we've covered. So, which factors determine the number of auditors that an audit program may need? Yes, the answer is D or above. The second part of this video is about audit activities. In general, this course contains guidance on planning and conducting audit activities as part of an audit program. Likewise, we start these activities with plan in the first place. Firstly, we initiate the audit and conduct document review and then prepare for on-site activities. Heading to the action stages, we conduct the on-site activities and prepare, approve, distribute our audit report. After that, we are about to complete the audit activities by checking the progress of our audit programs. Finally, we will conduct our audit by following these procedures above. As to the initiating stages, we still have a very specific procedure to follow. Firstly, we need to appoint the audit team leader to set up our own audit team. And then, we are ready to define our audit objectives, scope, and criteria. Thirdly, determining the feasibility of the audit could be very helpful to proceed our audit activities. After that, we need to build up our own audit team to conduct our work. Finally, we are able to establish initial contact with the auditee. The second step of planning our audit activities is to conduct document review. The objective of this step is to determine the conformity of the system as documented with audit criteria. The review should take into account the size, nature and the complexity of the organization and the objectives and the scope of the audit. For the final step of planning is of course to prepare the audit plan. Why is that important? Because the audit plan is a basis for the agreement among the audit client, audit team, and the ODT regarding the conduct of the audit. A comprehensive audit plan should cover the objectives, criteria and other documents, audit scope, data and process conducted, expected time and duration, rules and responsibilities, allocation of resources. After that, assign to each team member responsibility for auditing specific processes functions, sites, areas, or activities could be another important step to proceed this audit plan. The final step about preparation is to prepare the work documents. The audit team members should review the relevant information and prepare work documents. Our on-site audit activities should begin with conducting the opening meetings and communication during the audit. Next, rules and responsibility of guides and observers will be clarified during our activity. After collecting and verifying information, we are able to generate audit findings and prepare the audit conclusions as well. Finally, we are able to conduct the closing meeting about our audit activities. Move on to our audit report stage. For this stage, 
We will see all the results of our audit in that report. The audit is complete when all activities described in the audit plan have been carried out, and when the approved audit report had been distributed. Please be noted that the audit report should be issued within the agreed time period, and the audit report should be dated, reviewed, and approved in accordance with the audit program procedures. Finally, the audit team members and all report recipients should respect and maintain the confidentiality of the report. The final element of audit activities is conducting audit follow-up. That will depend on our auditees. They should keep the audit client informed of the status of these actions. First. The completion of the effectiveness of corrective action should be verified, and then this should be notified as part of a subsequent audit. Next, the audit program may specify follow-up by members of the audit team, which adds value by using their expertise. Last one, in such cases, care should be taken to maintain independence in subsequent audit activities. This is the end of this video. Do you have a clear understanding about audit activities right now? Thanks for watching.